Today is your last day of full service for the city? It is. It is. So from four hours from now, you work for the city of Fort Collins, right? Actually, <laughs> five hours from now. Maybe tomorrow morning. I think. Maybe tomorrow. You're not reporting until eight, okay? How many years have you worked for the city? Uh, almost 13. Almost 13. 13 in May. Well, from a personal standpoint, and I think I speak for most everybody at this dais, I want to thank you for that service. Because in the short time I've come to know you, okay, I know that you've had a, the heart of a servant and protected the people that sit at this dais, not only ourselves, but the predecessors that are in the pictures behind that wall. You've protected us, you've protected the city of Loveland, and you've protected the people of the Loveland in a fine stature. And I personally want to thank you for that service. If I could just say a few words, I, I, I want to thank this council um, for the time that I've got to represent you. And I, I, I didn't uh, say something after uh, our Sentara study session. I, th I think I should have said something then about um, thinking, you know, think, you know, I think you give a, give a lot of credit to past councils. I mean, I've been here 13 years, uh, and I think back to past councils, particularly the one who entered into the Sentara Master Financing Agreement and the hard work they put into getting that done and uh, the risk that they took. Uh, I think it's a risk that has paid off for the city, um, but I do remember one executive session where we went through, I mean, line by line, that master financing agreement, uh, and we were in an executive session to 4.30 in the morning one, one uh, night. So it was, it was an amazing thing that they did, and, and, uh, um, and I just want to thank you and, and past councils uh, for putting up with me for so long. So. you uh, because you know what's complicating this is the fact that a stay could come along you could do all this planning spend all this money and a stay could come along and then you might lose the money you've invested in the election and that sort of thing um, to avoid that and even to avoid what's happening in the legal arena uh, a possibility and this is something that was even suggested when I last brought this to council for putting it on the ballot and that's at the time we discovered the appeal had been filed and so forth, is that you, the council, has its own authority to refer any measure, whether citizen initiative or not. So you could refer this exact same measure to the vote, to the voters, to the ballot. and just set your own special election and refer it that way and then you would avoid a lot of these um, maneuverings that you have to think about and these options and alternatives. So I would just throw that out as a possibility of something to think about and a way to avoid what's happening now, I think. So. Yeah, go ahead. So that go goes to your point, John, of, of having, a, a, and I'm, maybe I'm missing something here, but I'm thinking what you're saying is that's that rule that you shared with the courts that, f no. Something different, actually. Yeah, 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 you're right. I, okay. What I'm saying is because under the, under the initiative provisions of the state statutes, the council can refer any measure. It doesn't have to be a citizen-initiated measure. You can refer any measure, right, right. any legislative matter to the voters for their consideration. So, for instance, if we decided to do something like that with the moratorium, we'd also then have the opportunity to um, write it well, any way we see fit. We wouldn't necessarily be taking their ballot initiative that has been their petition initiative that has been signed by 3,000 some odd people. We could do something completely different, and we can do that any time on well, any sure. issue. Yeah, you can always do that. But I was suggesting that if you wanted, because I assume if you, you know, draft your own ordinance, whatever it might be, it might not be acceptable to protect our loved one, and then they would want to go on with their initiative and and deal and still and you know and still we might still have to present it. Um, but I think that's uh, if, if a stay comes along, 
Uh, I mean, you could do both of them if they're consistent with each other. As long as they don't conflict, you could put two items on. One is a referred by council itself. Then if the state came along, then theoretically it would not affect your independent decision to put it on the ballot. It would only affect the citizen initiative itself that's up on appeal now.